My name is Cabra Williams. I'm from Heroes Camp Mishawaka. My assistant is Anna from We The Kids. Our show is being hosted by We The Kids. We The Kids is a nonprofit organization that promotes patriotism, American history, and a deeper understanding of America's founding documents and the principles of, upon which America was founded. What better way to teach the kids than to get them involved in doing real projects? The We The Kids sponsors for today are Devisser Landscaping Services out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, author David Devisser, author of Willie and Sherman, Battle of the Bulge, Anderson Augustino and Keller Law Firm, South Bend, Indiana, Troyer Group, Mishawaka, Indiana, and after our show, the party will be sponsored by Domino's Pizzas of South Bend, Indiana. Lance Corporals Eugene Pavlock, who served in the United States Marine Corps from American Legion Post 357 South Bend, <coughs> will lead us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you to all of our sponsors. We would like to welcome our Heroes Camp teams, Jerron, Kai, Xavier, and they will be the ones interviewing our special guest, Coach Jerron Cornell from Heroes Camp. Go ahead with the first question, Jerron. What advice were you given growing up in South Bend, Coach JC? Uh, what advice was I given? Um, just to treat people right. Um, always be respectful and, um, you know, just work as hard as you can in whatever it is you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Throughout your lifetime, what was your hardest tribulation and biggest takeaway from it? Uh, I got to say my hardest tribulation had to be when my uh, six-month-old daughter had to have a heart transplant. And uh, uh, my, my takeaway from it, my biggest takeaway from it was uh, just my faith in God and just how it increased from, from then until this day. What hi what events in history speaks to you the most, and does it and does it it have any impact to your philosophy? <laughs> okay. I don't know what um, the word is. Um, an event that occurred in my life. Uh, well, the first event I would have to say that kind of impacted me would be and you weren't even born yet, was in 1986, uh, Space Shuttle Challenger. Mm. Uh, we was watching it live on TV in our classroom, and you know, it, it blew up like 73 seconds into uh, flight. And that was, you know, the first time I actually seen um, something that, that tragic. And it was a school teacher on board as a citizen um, that, that took that flight. And I just thought about, uh, then the lives that were lost, the lives that was going to be impacted because of the lives that were uh, lost on that shuttle. And, you know, it just gave me a, a deeper, a deeper compassion for, you know, uh, children that lost parents, things like that. So. What is the greatest message you were sent to, Amer sent to America's youth? What? Can you repeat that? What is the greatest message you were sent to America's youth? Oh, wow. Um, that, you know, you can be what you want to be. You have to work and, you know, persevere. Um, but put God first in, in, in all that you do and, you know, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll direct your path. Yep. Next. Oh, God. What compels you toward working at an organization like Hero Camp? You guys. Uh, the kids, the children, the uh, you know, the fatherless. Uh, it gives me joy and gives, makes me pride that I can you know show you guys love on the daily, and it's it's something that's needed. Uh, all young men, you know, um, that grow up in this in this community is just it's, it's tough, you know. And when when you come from a single parent home. Uh, we just want to 
be there for you guys, be there for your moms, take that burden off of, and that pressure off of her. So, you know, that's, that's one of the uh, reasons that I do it. And if you didn't work there, what would you do? Uh, because I enjoy working with the youth, I'll, I'll probably be uh, where I was. I was a school teacher at uh, Clay High School, my former uh, school, and uh, basketball coach. That's, so I that's love working with the youth, so probably have my hand in something like that. What would Heroes Camp provide for South Bend's youth? Heroes Camp provides a safe place. It provides love. It provides uh, food. It provides gear, clothing, uh, just the the overall love. So that's that's what it provides. It provides a, a safe place to be, uh, where you can learn about Christ. You can change your life. You can kind of get your mind geared to where you want to go in life. What does the influence of being a father already do for you and working with kids? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, being a father for 19 years is just being there. The most important thing is being there and <clears throat> to provide for your children and you guys need, you know, providing for, you guys need love. You guys need structure, guidance, and all that. So, you know, um, being a father uh, just just helps add to, you know, being there, being there for you guys. Thank you for answering the question. You're welcome. What did it mean? What did it mean to win the the Indiana State title in 19, 1994? What did it mean? Uh, winning state title for me meant everything, as far as uh, athletically, because. Um, I know all the hard work that we put in years prior to actually winning state and then uh, watching it pay off, you know, that meant a whole lot to me, it was special to me. And also the fact that in 1994 when we won the state championship, there was only one champion. As you know, today uh, it's, it's, you have class champions. You got 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A champions. but. In '94, it was just one, so it was it was, it was one uh, pool, and no matter how big, no matter how small your school was, you had an opportunity to win state. So we got a chance to do that. That's what makes it so special. What was the tra trans transition from high school to college like for you? Well, the transition uh, academically was. Uh, different because you don't have as many classes in one day but uh, the time management was was different because you think you got a lot of time to do this do this work um, but you see quickly that um, it, it, you don't you got to stay on top of your, your academics and um, to succeed and for athletically the, the t one of the toughest transition was time management and you know because time management because you you got in between classes you got weight lifting you got conditioning and then more class then you got study hall and things like that so you know and then then the physical aspect of it was was tough but uh, you know I just think the biggest thing is time management, knowing how to manage your time. What advice do you have for young athletes who want to go to a D1 school, a D1 college? <laughs> time management, get your time management in order right now. Um, work as hard as you can, you know, on your game, on, on, on your person also, but, you know, definitely get in the weight room and just uh, don't back down from challenges. And when I say don't back down, I mean push yourself to the limit. And whatever you got, just give it your all, you know. That's what I would say. Who is an American hero you always, look, always looked up to? An American hero, American hero. Well, normally when you say American hero, you think about somebody that then has some lasting value in your life. and. Because I didn't know George Washington, I didn't know Dr. Martin Luther King, I didn't know any of them. Uh, but 
not to take away the fact that they did some great things. My American Heroes, honestly, is the founders of Heroes Camp, Pat Magley and BJ Magley. Uh, they sacrificed their whole life, you know, and they saved lives. And that's what a that's what a, a hero does. They they save lives, and and they did it. They've done this all over the country. Started here in South Bend, but Heroes Camp with the uh, people that's been in Heroes Camp, been impacted. They spread throughout the country. So those are my American heroes. What did you major in at Purdue University? My major is law and society. Um, and if you want to know what that is, is is I can work in the social field, or I could have got involved with law enforcement, or, you know, uh, if I would have carried on, continued the education, be a, become a lawyer, something like that. So it's, it's crim similar to a criminal justice degree, I Thank would you. think. Yep. Thank you're you, welcome. Coach. You're welcome. What message would you send to America's youth? I will tell American youth and to spread love, treat people like you want to be treated, and, and you know, just just to spread love and uh, have faith in God, believe in uh, believe in Christ, and just spread love. We got so much hatred going on that if everybody just took the time to love one another, that that this world would be a better place. And, and the Bible just says. That, Love never fails, so I would just simply tell them, love people. We would like to thank We The Kids, and especially Coach Jerron Cornell, for taking his time to join us. We have a gift for Coach Cornell. Um, the book Black Back Tracks 2 by Miss Martha Suggs Spencer. It is a very good book. I have read it. And Forgotten American Stories Celebrating Americans' Constitution by Lydia Wallace Nuttall as well as a certificate, a gift certificate, to Hacienda. Oh, awesome. So. Thank you. <laughs> that is for you. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Keep looking at it. <laughs> I'm going to have a certificate. I've been coming to Heroes Camp since I was four. It's, it's a, like it's a good place. Heroes Camp to me is like a home. It's, it's like family here. When yeah. we come, when we enter the door, you just feel a relief when you walk in. This is God's ministry done God's way.
Girls Camp has been pretty much everything for me is in my life. And I think that's the biggest thing about Heroes Camp. We really make kids feel like they belong in this place. They just belong in this community and in this world. You got love in the atmosphere, man. We have fun. You're having fun and you're learning about the word. It's going to impact you and it's going to change you for the better. It's hard to stop coming if you really love the place. They show you so much love. It's just a new family. You know, it's been a long time. Like this? Perfect. Okay, put it there. See how flat I got it? That's for somebody who didn't know they were going to have extra. Okay. Ready to put them in the pan? Okay, put it. I want you to go a little bit flat on yours. Flatter. Good. That's pretty flat. Good. Perfect. I've always wanted to have a cooking class, and I would like to, and I've always wanted to name it after my mother. She's passed away now, Katie Lee Parker Simmons. So I call it Kate's Kitchen. One thing I wanted to do with the young boys here: not only do we serve them food every day, uh, very nutritious homemade meals, I want to empower them to learn how to cook so they can feel self-sufficient, even at an early age. Most of them are coming from single parent homes, uh, single mothers that are working very hard, and I thought it would be uh, a positive influence on the whole family if that young teenager could learn how to cook and impress his mom one day, and they have brothers and sisters at home. I thought, well, hey, just tell her, I want to help mom. Look what I've done, look, look what I've learned at Heroes Camp. I wasn't down to just bawling and playing basketball and running around. I've learned a little skill. I want to impress you. Yeah, like that. Perfect, perfect. Now, everybody, what do you got? What do you have your, um, uh, your eggs on? Well, you take mine on. Mine was off. Yours off? Further, my dad uh, was an excellent cook. Men love to cook because they love to eat, so why not start them early is what I say. So you see how much you got? You want more crap on your stuff? Good. Uh, not only do we feed them here, but when they go home, sometimes it's to empty pantries and empty refrigerators. And to me, that creates a food insecurity. Uh, most people in America do not experience that. But we do have food insecurity right here in St. Joseph County. This is a major concern of us at Heroes Camp in dealing with young boys that are very active. They're gonna run around. They're gonna shoot hoops, they're gonna have some fun, dance, kitten around, but they are hungry. And I think if we gave them a tool that they could use uh, for basic meals, is what I'm teaching here. Uh, it's not a rocket scientist, but I'm hoping that maybe they'll catch on and say, you know what, maybe, maybe I don't feel so embarrassed if I go to the food service industry and start a part-time job and learn how to further cook. So when by us laying the foundation of them in a kitchen, understanding food, understand how to prepare it, how to stay clean with it, how to be safe with it, who knows, the future is wide open to them. I mean, come on, you could go uh, to culinary school in a local college. You could get trained faster as a line cook at, at one of the nice restaurants we got here. And they are well-paid jobs. Yeah, but Miss Joy, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, what I decided to do after much prayer is to have four classes every uh, uh, in a session. Four classes, so that's four weeks. And the reason why I wanted to do that is not to overwhelm them. And the main part of this is to honor the four graduates after they graduate. So you're gonna learn how to cook some basic things that boys love. So it's not like I figure these menus out on my own. I sort of know what they like because I've fed them for quite a few years. And then we'll have a celebration where we present them the completed graduates of the four weeks Kate's Kitchen cooking class 
what do you get when you complete this class course? Well, one, one thing you get is recognition with your peers, that you started something and you finished it. That's real key to young boys. Then they take home, which I am excited about, to get this to the mothers also, all the equipment they cooked on. I don't want anything used from anybody for these young boys. They've had enough of that. And so when they go home, I want a brand new skillet, I want a brand new grill in the box, and a brand new crock pot and utensils. They deserve that because God cares about them. And that's what he said, if I deny the desires of the poor, or let the eyes of the widow grow weary, if I've kept my bread to myself, not sharing it with the fatherless, but from my youth I reared him as I would rear as a father. Using my athleticism, my family um, orientation, my racial background, the insights that I had by living in the office of Revelation, um, I birthed heroes camp. It came out of the womb of my spirit. Too often men make babies, but they don't birth babies. And birthing a baby takes the ability to pray a thing through day in and day out, and it wears on you and you carry it. And it dictates to you uh, through the will of God what you should do and what you ought not do while you're pregnant. Now I'm not pregnant no more with Heroes Camp. Now I'm pregnant with the kingdom of God uh, through Heroes Camp, as far as Heroes Camp neighborhood, the chapel, uh, the Heroes Camp dormitory, the gear shop, and other things to make the playing field level. Uh, there's kids in the gym right now um, who uh, father just recently died. Uh, brothers, two guys out there who brother got shot last year. Uh, you know, they get what they need. You know, if you want, if you if you want to get what you want, well then you probably need to go get a job. But if you're gonna get what you need, your daily bread, uh, some some gym shorts, some sneakers, some deodorant, some hygiene products, the word, the love, um, food, knowledge, prophetic advice, um, being instant in season, out of season, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, uh, spirit of wisdom flows in this ministry. Uh, consistency. So uh, I want to invite people to, if they want to sponsor uh, one of the classes, it's for students. Uh, and we are 501C3. We're able to issue a tax receipt at the end of the year for your taxes. Thank you guys. Give me some hands. Say for instance, last night, I was so tired. I had been watching my three grandkids because they had meetings. And, and I went to Dollar General to sort of prepare some things for what I needed today. And I was so tired, I had no one to help me go to my car. And, and this one young lady um, at this Dollar General, she said, I got three boys. And it made me cry. She said, I want them to come to Heroes Camp on Saturday, but I just moved here and I got a job at this Dollar General and I don't have no way to get them there. And I said, oh, wow. She said, because sometimes I only have enough gas to get to work and back. And so, what do you do? So, um, she helped me carry my groceries out, big bottles of water, because I'm trying to lose weight, big bottles of water. She carried it out to my car, and I gave her $30, my last $30. I said, fill your car up with gas and let me know. Maybe I could swing by or get somebody to pick them up because we don't have transportation here. I care about this. This is not something I'm doing to be on YouTube. I'm doing this because it's a mandate from God. You care about what I care about, BJ. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to send the resources. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, those who have that same heart and, and it's not a shame of marginalized uh, young boys that care about what God cares about. Then go online and give. Send us a check. We got, we, we got this part. You help us with the burden. That's, that's, that's my passion and I'm going to do it with people 
or without people, but I can't do it without God because he helps us every day, every day to get in here and get, get busy. So I hope, I hope it hits the mark. Thank you. 